Look at me. Y'all see how I look right now? This man that brought me on a date to Shake Shack. Like, of all places. Look at him. Shake Shack is nothing wrong. Then you order the chicken sandwich and stuff. Like, it's nothing wrong with Shake Shack. Shake Shack is a good spot. You tripping. You really? Trip. So you could tell me you nowhere else better than Shake Shack. Shake Shack is a good spot. I mean, this what you got me. That's it. You got me two sandwiches and a drink. So what? And it cost me $50 for just this. This cost you $50. $50. It cost me $50. Let me see the receipt. You ain't got to see the receipt. That's how much it costs. You act like you ungrateful. That's why I don't like going on dates and stuff like that. I mean, you be going out spending hundreds of thousands at the club and stuff like that. I don't see I mean, why I got to come to Shake Shack. The thing about this is this is lunch. You said, let's go out for lunch. Surprise me. Not to you to Shake Shack. Like, that's the best surprise you could have got. Go ahead, start recording. I'm already, I'm already in there. I'm gonna show the internet. Yeah, show them. Show them. Show them. But you want to order, like, you still order. Show them. Like, you, you still about to eat. I ain't saying the food was nasty. I just said I wanted I something else. Where you want to go? Where you want to go? Where you want to go? I mean, shoot. I mean, right here in, in uh, the South Side. I mean, all these fancy restaurants over here. We couldn't have got something that at least gave me some that's silverware. Dinner. That for okay, but check this out. I'm check this out. No, hold on, hold on. Right I'm, I'm, about to, I'm about to prove a point, though. Yeah. Pick up your floor. Pick up your floor. Let me see your floor. That's how she that's, that's do floor. it. Bro. That's a floor. This is how she really? do it. Okay. This is how she say. Right. finger food. Okay. Like, you don't even need a fork. This okay. is bougie. Like, All right. that's bougie. All right. Okay. So, listen, gentlemen. Now, let me say thought off by just going ahead and get beating the elephant in the room. <laughs> Let's talk about the elephant in the room. The cheesecake, the cheesecake factory, that whole skit, this could all be a troll. Here's what I'm gonna say about that. Don't care. So let's talk about it. You men have got to stop. You have got to start leaving these women. I was a man, you can go back and watch my old videos. I was a man that says, Let's 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 just do it. Let's stay together. Women, y'all got to change. Women, y'all gotta do this. Women, y'all gotta do that. Women, women, women. I'm done. I'm just waiting for them to and we're done with that conversation. What is time now for men is to quit fighting. Quit getting in these fights. Round one. Fight. Often com commonly just fighting in these fighting for these women and fighting for the relationship. Men. We are normally try to stick it out. We try to make these things work. We try to see what we can do. We try to hear that logic. Enough. Enough. We, men, the, the war is over. The fight's over. Put down your shield. Put down your weapon. Like Michael Jackson did at that concert. Just put the weapon down. It's over. What you should start doing now, men, is y'all got to realize how much power you truly have. You go out there and work yourself to the ground. Get your money up. Do whatever you got to do. And think about that. You could change a woman's life with the amount of money that you make, the protection that you bring, the things you can provide. You could change a woman's life. She could change your life. But yet, y'all keep sticking around with these women and keep letting them talk smack to you. Quit. It's time to start arguing. It's time to stop. If they're not your wife, maybe you give one chance. Maybe two. But it's time to start going with the three strikes you out. You got one time. She said something crazy. You correct it. Second time. You correct it. Third time. No more. If she ever puts your business out on social media, that's three strikes right there. If she ever blasts you on social media, that's it right there. We are going to have to rebuild what it means to be a man brick by brick by leaving chick by chick. Hear me again. We are going to rebuild what it means to be a man brick by brick by leaving chick by chick and just going on with your life. Too many of you men are stuck. In this, I don't want to be lonely. I don't want to sit around all day in my bedroom just not knowing what to do. I need a woman there to make me feel complete. If I don't get that, what will I do? You shut up. You move on. 
I'm not a military man. But one thing I can obviously respect for the military men I've met, I've met, shout out to the media man. Shout out to Goggins. Shout out to Flex, who y'all don't know. <laughs> but nonetheless, these men, they know discipline. But another thing they know, accountability. They know whose fault it is. How many times have you heard Goggins say, it's your fault, motherfucker? You got to get your ass out of bed. You got to look yourself in the mirror. You got to make your change. What's it? Sorry about that. How many times does he say that? We have to learn to stop blaming. Ooh, hold on, man. I'm about, to get, I'm about to get wild. Hold on. Let me slow down. I know, I know. Men, we have got to stop blaming women for every little thing that happens with us. You've you've been hearing the women shout, scream. If men want to change it, change it. Okay. And I was thinking about this the other day. If men truly want the power back with us, we could do it. It's just a matter of doing it. That's really all that's stopping men from taking everything back. You know? Men, we control relationships. We control marriages. If we stop giving these women our time and stop letting us disrespect us and then getting on the internet and crying, then we could make some progress. This is what I'm not saying to do. I'm not saying go out there and harm women. I'm not saying going out there... And I want to say harm, I mean, like emotionally, verbally, get on there. Just uh, every time you see a woman making any content, you go in there and just tear her down. No, I'm not telling you to bash women. I'm not telling you to even hate women. I'm telling you, get with the women who want to be God. Y'all hear that freaking candle over here just sizzling? I mean, just... By the way, more, where's my manners? I'll make this real quick for the people who are watching this replay. Uh... Cologne of the night is going to be bad boy by Carolina, Carolina Herrera. We'll talk more about that later. Okay, so men, stop getting with the women who don't want to be God. Too many times I hear men cry about gold diggers, 304s. Oh, she just wants a man who looks like this. She wants a man who's tall. She wants a man who's beautiful. Y'all got to quit. Y'all have got to quit bitching. I'm sick of it. I'm a short man. I am a fat man. I cannot complain about every woman who doesn't want me. I'm a married man. But if I was back on these streets, a lot of women pass me by. I'm not going to bitch complain. There's two things I can do. Since I've been in my relationship, I've been losing more and more weight every year. Because one important thing, shout out to the medium of man again. One important thing that I realize is just because you're married men, let me go to this quick side. Let me get to this quick side. I come right back, okay? Once we get married, men, that doesn't mean you let yourself fall to the wayside. I was, I almost got myself to where I was almost 400 pounds. I'm, a, I'm obviously a food addict. But my point is, is that I was letting myself fall apart because I thought, I'm good. Uh, that's not what us men do. We always strive to improve. We fall on our fucking faces and we get back up. We fall on our face. We get back up. I've lost weight, gain weight, lost weight, gain weight, lost weight, gain weight. I built a whole home gym, barbells, everything, everything you could ask for in a gym. I have that bit by bit because I don't want any excuses to where I, why I can't get myself in shape. Every day I try to make a difference. I walk four miles a day. I want to get that up to six or seven. Four miles a day. And on the days I'm off, I walk about two. Getting better about not eating at night. I'm making small, small changes. Man, this is the same thing you do financially. Stop spending money on bullshit. Slowly pay off that debt. Slowly start being it to where you can get insurance. Slowly start getting to where you can get health insurance. Slowly start building your skills so where if you were to lose your job, you can actually fall into a career. Build skills that can translate. Build skills that can travel. Those things start to matter, men. Bit by bit, when it comes to your attire, I don't care what you wear, whether it's street wear, casual wear, or uh, street wear, 
or casual wear. I know I'm missing one. I don't know why I can't think of it right here at the moment. Streetwear, casual, uh, we'll call it classy. I know it's something else, but I can't think of the word. But you want to wear classy clothes, you want to be casual, you want to wear streetwear. Look nice. Do your best. Hit that beard up. Get some natural beard oil, whatever. I don't care what you use. You don't want to use store-bought. You don't want to use all those chemicals. Go find a natural beard ingredient. I've seen men use strawberries on their hair. I'm not saying do that, but I've seen it. I've seen men who have styled and used strawberries to style their beard, to style their hair. They, they're they all natural. I don't care what you do. Figure it out. Men, start learning about taking care of yourself. I am a man also who is not the cleanest. Every week I have to clean up this office that I'm in because I know I am not the best when it comes to cleaning. My wife is a great cleaner, keeps the entire house clean. That's something I have made a vow to work on this year. Being a cleaner individual, I don't let my car get dirty. I'm working better on not letting my office get so cluttered. These things matter. I'm, I'm learning to sweep more, mop more. This is embarrassing stuff that I'm even talking about. But this is what I'm saying, man. We want to make relationships better. We have to do everything step by step. There should be a no reason a woman should ever have to look at you and see that you're quote unquote dusty. And I know dusty can mean a multitude of things based off whatever a woman's feeling that day. But what I'm going to call Dusty is going outside in sweatpants and a hoodie. Your hair ain't brushed. Your beard ain't combed. You may have got to stop going into the world smelling like booty. You may have got to stop wiping y'all's ass. you got to stop wiping y'all's balls. Go buy some dude wipes. I use dude wipes. Clean that ass. Clean that balls. Y'all are fucking dirty. I'm tired of smelling y'all's ass. Wash your socks. Get some better shoes. Look better. Be better. Every one of us has a weakness, and you're walking out there with what you got. Okay? You got a beat-up ass car? Make sure that bitch is clean. I got a beat-up car. I'm, I try to make sure that thing is clean. Every detail matters, man, because when the day does come and you built your skills and your time finally arrives and you're starting to hit that financial s- s- stride, Baby, you're, you'll have the skills and everything to keep it going because money's not going to stop you from being a dirty person. Money's not going to stop you from paying attention to the details. Money is not going to stop you from how you dress. It matters. That is how we will get our power back, man. Start presenting yourself in such a way that you, you care about yourself. Your fitness matters. Damn it, some of y'all need to learn how to clip them dang nails. Just quit letting yourself fall apart. I'm not saying you're being perfect. Y'all can see I'm not perfect. There's times I get on here, my tie's crooked. Sometimes it's not perfect. Okay? Y'all see my belly poking? But I'm trying. That's all us men need to keep doing is striving to be better every single day. So you don't keep falling into these problems. Of some girl saying that you took her to uh shake and snack or whatever you call it shake snack shake shack and saying oh you only you only you spent fifty dollars you could take me somewhere better if a woman's standards are up past yours man and I'm not saying you need to be go re- eating at root Chris if that's not where you can eat right now that's not where you can eat right now if you take her to your local IHOP and you got IHOP money but y'all can get damn near everything any you can go to IHOP and spend two hundred dollars and y'all can eat good then go there. And if she says IHOP is not good enough, guess what? You leave. If her standards are too high for you, don't you get on there and bitch. Don't you start complaining to her. Don't you text her mean messages. You get your your grown ass man. You say, thank you for your time, ma'am. You you get the meal. You pay for the meal. You take her home. You drop her off and you bid her a good night. And that's the end of discussion. No text, no nothing else. You wish her a good night and you move on with your life. Too many of you may get stuck on that one woman who broke your heart and you treat every single woman you come across. Oh my God, my last girl, she hurt my feelings. So fuck everybody. Y'all go into the future. Chase a chick. Never chase a bitch. I get that. But y'all are getting to it where y'all just want to like be mean. 
Y'all want to hurt every woman that comes across you. You want to prove a point. So when you do get money, you want to throw it in women's face. It's just like we used to see those stupid pranks of men who tried to get with women and they all of a sudden they got a, a nice little Lamborghini that they rented out. And then a woman comes back and she's like, oh my God, you have a nice car. No stupid shit. That's what boys do. That's what men were. That's what us men were growing up on. Men older than me grew up on different stuff. Us men my age, that's what we grew up on. Trying to prove every woman that money isn't everything. Guess what, man? I'm sorry to tell you this. I'm really about to hurt your feelings. Money means a fucking lot, though. No, it's not everything. Money is not God. But damn it, it's a lot. And what I mean by that is when men say money isn't everything, well, normally the only kind of men I ever hear say money isn't everything, those are the kind of men who don't make money. Those are the kind of men who or will never make money. They only say that because they don't have any skills to continue to make more money. The men I hear say, okay, money's not everything, but money is simply a tool. That's the kind of men I see make it. No, money's not everything. Money is a tool. That's it. It's a tool to get you where you need to be. It's a tool to get you to help your family out of poverty. It's a tool to help your family be well off if should every, anything happen to you. It's a tool to build businesses. It's a tool to build a network. It's a tool to help people. It's a tool to get the charity. It's a tool to get you where you need to be in your own life. That's what money is. It's a tool. No, it's not everything. Duh. But too many of you men... Use that as an excuse to go home. When you get off your nine to five, you don't do anything different. You don't try to gain more skills at night. I'm going to tell you all a quick story. And this is not a bragging story. I, I'll say this right here from the very top. I am not an arrogant man. Up to this point in my life, as of right now, I am still a loser. Okay, I would define myself as a loser. I am getting better, but I am not anywhere close to being any man that I would tell you, hey, you know what? This man right here, he's a man, a high value. No, I'm none of that shit. I'm a man who's been getting it together the last few years. So I'm not here to say, oh, I'm this great person. I am a man who's simply trying. Try it out the Andy Minio. Let me tell you a story. I got a job. And I got this job. And I took this job so seriously. I'm talking about I took this job so seriously that when I was not working at nine to five, I would show up to work early, like an hour early and just learn everything I could. When we were still in training, I learned everything I could. I tried to be the best agent I could. And when you do this, man, people are going to not like you. They're going to call you an overachiever. They're going to call you a try hard. They're going to call you lame. They're going to call you a square. They're going to call you everything in the book. Throw up the middle fingers and keep going. And those who want to come along, help them too. I spent so much time learning my fucking tools. And I spent a lot of time helping other people try to be the best they could. I didn't care. Here's the beautiful thing, guys. You can't always be number one. Num the number one spot, it, it jostles. Okay? It jostles. My goal was to stay in the top five. I was always number one. But it wasn't, hey, I try to be number one. It was like my goal when I got in there, I said, let me do top five. Because you know what KPIs or sales, sometimes you, you can't always be top dog. Sometimes there's jostling between you and the other best people, especially if y'all know the game. But I stayed number one. And people hated me. I remember everybody was jocking for me. It was the one time, it's one of the few times in my life I've ever been at the top dog and everybody wanted to take me down, it felt like. I had so many people say, I'm coming for that top spot, Jerry. And I would tell them, good luck. I, I didn't care that much. Yes, did I want to stay at the top? Absolutely. But it wasn't a life or death thing for me. It was a, I know how good I am. I'm telling you good luck because it's, it's going to take you a ton of fucking work to be better than me. Because I know everything there is to know about this specific job I do. It was insurance, by the way. Not like State Farm, not like I'm giving you car insurance. More like it's hard to explain, but nonetheless, it was dealing with the insurance in a big way. Millions of dollars, pretty much. Nonetheless, I was great. But you know what happened? I became a supervisor. And I was fucking terrible. Yes! Terrible! By the time I finally got it together and learned how to be a supervisor, it was too late. Guess what happened to Trey? Trey got demoted. 
I was so embarrassed I quit. I was so, to go from being the very top of the top to getting demoted, I was so embarrassed I quit. I went broke for months. Stupid. Should have kept making money, but I was too dumb. And then I got the opportunity to come back and I went back to being the top guy. And then I moved to another sales. I went into sales, top guy. And then I went into electronic technology sales. I went from being one of the top five. I was the worst. I'm not even kidding. I went from top five in sales. I went to another campaign. I was working. I'll be honest. I was working in Verizon sales. I went from being top to working for Verizon. I went from the top guy. I was the worst employee by far. I'm not even joking. They, you know that when you have KPIs, they they give you a ranking system based on your location, the regional location, and state location. You know, you know your rank. I was at the bottom, the worst employee on the entire team in my own damn local city. I had to make a change. I had to take accountability for being as lazy as I was because I thought I could just walk into this shit. And I rose back to the top, at the very tippity top, top five, stayed in that top five. All I'm trying to say, men, and I know this has been long-winded, but if we want to rebuild relationships with men and women, we have got to start putting our head down and getting to it. You're going to fail doing this. You're going to find that woman you really do like. And you still may get rejected for a multitude of reasons. You weren't clean enough. You weren't nice enough. You weren't really fun to talk to. Men, you have to build all these different skills to get where you need to be. Too many of y'all think it's just money. Oh, man, I got a lot of money. That's all that matters. No, men with money who don't know how to network, who don't know how to socialize, who don't know how to build, who don't know how to be uh, uh, used to the, a group, that they know how to help other people. Those men just have money, but they won't have it long. Or they'll have a certain amount of money, but they won't build it fast. You build money with a network of people. You learn how to talk to people. That's how you build money. So if a woman rejects you, man, don't take it to heart. Move on to the next one. Go home, listen to, you gotta let it burn when you say that you love me and you really huh? Go home and listen to that. You'll be okay. Move on. Cry and move on, man. Man, we can do this. We can do this. Brick by brick by leaving chick by chick. And let's get it. I'm gone.